He was part of the executive leadership of Century 21 Award, and his success has resulted in him becoming a speaker, consultant, business and life coach, the chief invigorator of KF Invigoration, whose passion is to dynamically serve people and corporations to take their lives and businesses to the next level. Mr. Kurt Francis. <laughs> So every week, somebody says to me, so where are you from? Uh, and I tell them, South Africa. That makes me an African-American without a tan. <laughs> so often people ask me, so, so how often do you go home? I say, well, I go home every night. Where do you go? <laughs> people say, you've got such a cute accent. And I say, no, I think the Americans have got the best accent. Because in South Africa, we would say, that's nasty. But American would say, that's nasty. You can feel it. <laughs> January the 10th, 2014, was a day set to be one of the most exciting days of my life. I was about to marry the man I loved, Fernando. The wedding was set in a beautiful setting in a friend's home, private home, where one of them were going to officiate the wedding. Everything seemed perfect until five days before the wedding, and I received an email from my father. I realized my father had taken a long time to write that email because he's lost his eyesight, and I knew nobody else had typed it for him. And in there, he shared with all his passion, I knew this was a big deal to him. He said, Kurt, because of my religious views, I cannot celebrate or participate in your celebration or support with what you're doing. Wow. That was, felt like devastating. I, every emotion inside me, as you can imagine, what it did five days before your wedding, a day I had longed for so long. I thought about a lot of things and I realized what my dad was really doing and I responded to that email to him very shortly. It was really interesting because every time Fernando and I went back to South Africa, we had to get a visa for Fernando, being a Mexican from Mexico. And my father had to write a letter of invitation to the South African consulate. And every time he wrote that, it was like he was writing about his own son coming to visit him. When we arrived in South Africa, we'd get off the, the aircraft, my father would come and hug Fernando, smile at him and welcome him. When we left South Africa to come back home to the United States, my dad would hug him with tears in his eyes. Every single time I speak to my father, which is every single week on a telephone, he always asks, Kurt, tell me, how is Fernando? Would you please send my love to him? To digest this dichotomy of how can my dad share those views and yet love Fernando and myself and honor the role that he plays in my life. That was mind boggling. I realized that in our nation today, we're also facing a lot of things with agreement and disagreement between red and blue. But I've learned my father taught us that relationship is not based on agreement. It's based on trust and respect, no matter what we believe. Somebody I've studied for quite a few years of my life, a year of my Nelson Mandela. I went to visit his prison cell where he spent 27 years, or 18 years of the 27 years, the small cell. Because he was a black man, in the bitterly cold winters on Robben Island, he was given a short sleeve shirt and short pants. Because he's a black man, he was given less food, less sugar, less carbs, less everything. But yet, February 11th, 1990, when he was released, he walked out of there, not holding anybody in anger. I will never forget the day he walked out. He walked out as a free man, but never with revenge. Because he said, if you want to overcome your enemies, you need to study them and become friends with them and build relationships with them, as he did with the guards and the wardens. Let me tell you something now. Disagreement. Disagreement is not nasty. My favorite word. Disagreement is wonderful. Disagreement is the thing that's going to build freedom in our own life and bring us freedom. You are free when you are okay to disagree. Thank you.